Hello everyone. This is Adish. I am a grade 10 student from Mumbai. So today's problem is copy and push back. The difficulty level of this problem is simple because you really don't need to know anything other than the basics of strings in order to understand my solution. So in this problem, we are basically given a string which we need to form. So we need to form the string A by performing some operations. Initially, our string is empty and we perform two operations, two types of operations. The first operation is to choose a lowercase Latin letter between A and Z and add it to the string S. And the second type of operation is to double the string S. We cannot perform the first type of operation more than uh, uh, we cannot perform the operation more than once in a row or basically we can't perform it twice in a row. So we can only uh, keep on uh, adding the elements one at a time and once we add an element we are we have to double the string. So we can add an element and double the string and double the string any number of times as we want. But whenever we add an element the next operation has to be an operation of doubling the string. So we need to check whether we can form a string A by manipulating the string S in the two types of operations such that we don't add any lowercase Latin letter more than once. So let's consider examples. Let's see that the string is EB. Then in this case, we know that we can just um, use the operation A once. However, once we use A, once we append A to the string, we cannot append B as well. We need to double A because the second operation is forced and doubling A will form AA, which cannot be turned into AB. So we will print no. In the second example, we can add O. We can add O first, then we can double it and then we can add F. And hence we can do the operation. Uh, we can form the string A using the operations. In the next example, we can add A, double it, add B and double that to get AAB. A, A, B. So we'll print yes. And in the last example, we can get the string. We cannot get the string because there's a V in between. So we can add E, double it, and then we cannot we, we can add B. So we can get this string so far. However, we are forced to double the string, which will give us E E V E E V, which will not work uh, because we want E E V E E without the final V, which is why we will print no. So in general, the key idea in this problem is to think backwards. So the way to think backwards in this problem will be to perform the operations from the given string A to get back the string S, which is an empty string. So we'll try to start from the string A. Let's just call, uh, in the code I'll call it string S, but obviously it's actually string A. So let's consider the string A and let's try to form the empty string from that. So we know that if the string A has a length n, so let's say the string A has a length n, so modulus of A is n, and we know that if the string, uh, if n is odd, then this means that if you think backwards, if you use the paradigm of thinking backwards, we know that we should have added a character to the end of the string, Otherwise, it cannot be odd. So if you double the string, so what is the last operation which you would have done? You would have either doubled the string or added a character. And you could not have doubled the string because then the string would have an even length. This means that you added a character to the string. And hence, we performed operation one last. So the last operation which we performed is operation one. So we performed operation one in the end. Otherwise, if the string is even, we know that if the length of the string is even, this means that we performed operation two in the end, because if you perform operation one, then the length of the string will become odd and will become odd. So that's why we can figure out which operation we performed in the end by just checking the parity of n. So this is the key idea, which we'll be using in the full solution. And actually using this hint itself, you should be able to complete the full solution. And now I'll just be explaining briefly how exactly we can use this idea to get the final solution. So we can use this idea by realizing that the only condition which is left is to check in the case when n is even. When n is odd, we can perform operation one and we can remove the last element. This means that 
we can decrease that by 1. However, if you consider the second operation, we will need to check if the first half of the string is equal to the second half of the string. And we can do this in a simple O of n check in O of n over 2 time. So this takes n over 2 time. Uh, I mean, this takes O of n time, but it, the entire algorithm will not be n square. I'll be explaining exactly why in a bit. In a bit. So let's just first consider the case. Let, let's just like try to finish the algorithm and then I'll be explaining the time complexity. So checking whether the first half is equal to the second half takes O of n time. It takes n operations. And once we do that, we can uh, again decrease, we can divide n by 2. So n will be equal to n over 2 because we only need to consider one half of the string. Once we have doubled the string, we, we are essentially performing a reverse operation of removing the second operation, which means that we will need to consider only one half of the string and hence n will be halved. In the first case, when we performed only one operation of adding a character, we will decrease n by 1 because we know that we can remove the last operation and we can consider only the remaining even length string and we can divide it by 2 and we can repeat this process of dividing by 2 repeatedly until you get an odd number and removing the last character when you get the odd number. And in this manner, we can check uh, either recursively or iteratively whether the string is possible. So I'll be explaining the iterative approach. The recursive approach will actually be shorter, but um, the iterative approach is more like easier to code or it's basically simpler so we'll do this repeatedly of uh, so we'll perform these two steps repeatedly and now let's look at the time complexity so initially it, it takes o of n time to check whether the first half is equal to the second half however once you have the string it takes n over two time to check this condition then it takes n over four time then it takes n over eight time and so on so you can see that this is a geometric series with common ratio half and with first term one. So that's why it will converge to one minus one over half because the common ratio is half. The first term is one and the formula is basically a over one minus r. So uh, this converges to two. So that's why it takes only O of n time because two times n is O of n and we only need two n operations or, or an O of n algorithm. And that's why uh, the entire time complexity is actually O of n even though we are doing a kind of brute force approach of checking whether the first half is equal to the second half. And that's why this problem is actually very simple to both understand and to look at the code. So let's see the code. So in the code for each test case, I'll take in the value of n. I actually use the variables L and R, but I can code it again um, in a manner which uses only the variable n because we are only decreasing, like we are only reducing the string from the last element to the string with only length one. So let's only update the variable n. We don't need to actually update the string. So while the value of n is greater than 0, if n is odd, we will decrease n by 1 because we are removing the last character from the string s. So this is what we are doing by decreasing n. Otherwise, check if the first half of the string is equal to the second half. And we can do this by calculating the mid value. The mid value is n over 2. And since n is even, you can consider an example like n can be 2. So 2 over 2 is 1. So we need to check whether the string from 0 till mid and the string from mid plus 1 till n minus 1, whether those two are equal or not. Because if you consider the case when like n is 2, then 0 till 1 and 2 till 2. So when n is even, this should actually be n over 2 minus 1, because if you consider another example where n is 4, then 4 over 2 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. So 0 till 1 will form one part, and 2 till 3 will form the other part. So uh, another example is like when n is 2, so it will be 0 and 1. So that's why the mid value should be n over 2 minus 1. And uh, Basically, you can just take many examples and realize that whenever n is even, you need to take n over 2 minus 1 as the mid value. And uh, now I'll just continue the code where you check whether the substring from 0 till that value. So the substring has size mid plus 1 
and because because like when mid is something like two the size of the string is three because the substring gives you the size so if the substring from zero till mid if that is equal to the substring from let's say like from mid plus one till the end so that substring will have a size of n minus mid and if these two substrings are equal so it, it will actually have a size size of n minus mid plus one because if you consider an example where n is six then six minus two will give you four four plus one is three four four minus one is three so it should be this n minus mid minus one and once these two substrings if these two substrings are equal we will just continue by setting n to be n over two so we'll divide n by two otherwise we know that the answer is false so we will use a boolean variable to represent the answer so initially the answer is true and once we get a discrepancy we will set it to be false so if in the end if answer we'll print yes otherwise we'll print no and now i'll just sum this code to see if it gets accepted so one important condition which i missed writing over here is to put a break once you set answer to be equal to false once you do that you get an ac otherwise you get a tle so i hope you like this problem and my solution if you have any doubts do read them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you